And welcome to our midweek Talk Politics Roundtable. I'm joined by KATV's lead capital reporter, Janelle Lilly, Talk Business and Politics contributor, Steve Bronner, Talk Business and Politics contributor, Frank Scott. It's a Talk Business and Politics Day. You're surrounded by all of us, That's Janelle. Okay. You're used to I'm it. comfortable That's here. right. It's good. All right. You guys know the format. You get to bring a question to the table. You got to answer everybody's question. You get to ask your question first. Janelle. All right. I'll let you do the big story of the yeah, week. Yeah, it is the big story of the week. My question to you guys is, what do you think is going to happen? Do you believe that Representative Justin Harris is going to resign or not over the uh, fallout that's happened after the Arkansas Times article was published yesterday? I'll go first if you want. So yeah. um, I think that the pressure is going to be imminent upon him to at least start speaking to the media at some point in time. I think he effectively avoided the media on Wednesday. Um, but this story is not going to go away and the questions about it are not going to go away. I, I, I would not be surprised to see him get enough pressure that he does eventually have to resign uh, his seat just over this whole controversy. My initial takeaway. Well, I, I just recently read the article uh, about all of the information at hand. Um, still trying to really just process it right now. and. Um, I totally agree with Roby that um, there are going to be some answers needed uh, sooner or later. Uh, and it's just a matter of time when we actually get the full story. Well, I, I don't know what Justin Harris is going to do. It's hard to imagine that they're, they're not being legislation, though, mm -hmm. at least Agreed. coming you know, immediately. Thank goodness this came out while there's still time to, to, to do something about it legislatively. You know, this whole thing kind of uh, mass the fact that there's actually been a pretty uh, a heroic effort in the past few years on the part of some uh, Christian organizations and DHS to place a lot of children in homes through groups called like the Call and Project yeah. Zero. They've done a wonderful job, mm -hmm. um, but there's this gaping hole in the law that, that has to be addressed, and I'm, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, I would like to point out, too, I mean, Justin Harris has not been accused of doing anything yeah, illegal, and to what we know in terms of what the story that's out there, there's not been any law broken. There is not a law about rehoming. I, that's what we're hearing from all the sources, but I agree with you. At some point, you have to tell your side of the story, and you can't do that if you avoid the cameras and if you avoid the, the reporters. I mean, you had a, a line of reporters out there today that you know, wanted to give him the opportunity to do that, and he decided against it. And so, I mean, that's not going to be acceptable for a long period of time. Yeah, I mean, if this weather holds him out for the uh, next couple of days, I mean, then they'll go back until away. next week. They'll yeah. be waiting for him next week, Absolutely. so at some point in time. All right, Steve Bronner, you get to ask the next question. Your question would be to the panel. Sure. Um, what is it going to take for Governor Hutchinson to not get what he wants on a major <laughs> piece of legislation or act? An act of God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Governor Hutchinson has really done a great job the first couple of months in office. He has um, Republican leadership in both the House and the Senate. Uh, quite frankly, he's a, been seen as a very centrist, common sense type of governor. Uh, he's been operating in that fashion, and when you have a very centrist, common sense type of governor with the, the majority at hand, you tend to get what you want and get it done pretty quickly, which we've seen virtually all of his campaign promises have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he gets a lost this session. I mean, you only have about a month left anyways, and you've already tackled most of the stuff. I mean, I guess maybe you could call the capital gains tax his first semi-defeat, but even that was, mm -hmm. you know, modified and tempered a little bit. So I just, from what I'm seeing coming forward down the pipeline, I think he basically is at batting a thousand right now. Maybe his first defeat could be at the hands of the House in the basketball charity game tonight. Nope. Janelle. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You're on the Senate team. Of course, you're biased. I think that there is an opportunity for him to lose something on one of the tax issues. Maybe, Maybe. not even capital gains, but there's a lot of other tax cuts in the hopper. Legislate. The legislature gets to really kind of have the final say on that. They could override a veto if they wanted to. We may still see some squabbling. Typically, though, that stuff gets worked out behind the scenes. We saw it with BB. There were tax cuts he didn't embrace, but he went along with it, and sure. it ultimately worked itself out. I suspect the same thing will happen with Hutchinson on that, but that would be the biggest area. Do you have a particular area where you think he may fail? Uh, not this session. I yeah. think the only thing that can stop him is the reality that occurs when a governor has been in there for a while and has stepped on some toes and made some mistakes and just people are just ready to just oppose him. 
Yeah. At this point, I think he's going to sail I mean, through the whole session. He'll step on a few toes tonight at the basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> he plays some hard defense. Yeah, so. uh, you've been in practice with him. So, yeah. uh, all right, Frank, your question. My question is, who do we think is the uh, quiet but effective unsung hero or heroine in the legislature thus far, mm -hmm. and why? I've I've given this a lot of I, like ever since you told me this, I've been kind of racking my brain on this question. I'm going to, and I don't know if he's unsung or not, but I'm going to give it to Representative Collins right now. He had that one bill that kind of pushed him out into the front, but as far as just other things, you know, he got appointed to the private option panel, the committee that's, or task force that's going to be there. I just feel like as far as the movement and things, I mean, he got a bill through a committee that nobody thought was going to get through committee by basically jocking his way through it and compromising. And I just feel like He's pretty effective in that role, but he's not necessarily in leadership, you know, and so I would, yeah. I don't know if that's unsung or not. You, he's out there, maybe not as loud as I think others. he's got a challenge with that bill down in the Senate, though, Judiciary Committee, where it's been assigned as a 4-4 four, four I never Republican thought that it Democrat. would get through the House Committee, mm. so like the fact that he got it through there, I mean, it just kind of goes to show you. Steve Bronner, your unsung hero. I guess I got to be next. This is a hard question because typically if someone is doing a good job, they're sung. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I guess my choice would be representative to Bruce Cozart, who is the chair of House Ed. Um, you know, yeah. this has been a very smooth session so far with education. Uh, he's kept it that way. Uh, today, he's, he's managed to pass through a, a bill that would uh, re allow the Department of Education to provide a waiver for a school district to go below 350. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been a, really, a real thorn in people's side for a while. Um, it's, it's, it's gone through, you know, this prevents c cases where a district is performing well and still gets, gets, gets consolidated for really no reason and going below 350, so I'd say yeah, Bruce Cozart. Hot Springs. I would back you up on them, but I mean, he really has been running that committee really well. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, I'm going to go with one who's gotten some publicity, but I think it's been unexpected, is Representative Nate Bell. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in the previous sessions, I think Nate Bell you know, had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, particularly from his social media activity in the last mm -hmm. legislative session. He's been fairly quiet this year. He has been. I just, I don't think I expected him to kind of rise to the leadership level that he has on the Martin Luther King, Robert E. Lee debate. Uh, he's chaired state agencies committee. That's a booger bear of a committee because yeah. you got all the constitutional amendments that'll come through. I think he's kind of set a pretty good schedule for dealing with that. And I've been impressed with Representative Nate Bell, which I would not have thought I might say at the beginning of this legislative session, but I, I think he's kind of my unsung hero at this point in time in terms of standing up for some right things. I totally agree. I actually, uh, you stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, Representative Nate Bell has done a great job. I mean, in the face of a lot of adversity from his uh, folks who uh, disagree with the separation of the Robert E. Lee and Martin Luther King holiday, uh, it was just great to see him there and um, even from an orthodox standpoint to really speak the reasons why and why we need to move forward as a state with this particular holiday. Mm -hmm. As far as the hero, and I would, I'm kind of still between, of course, uh, Senator Jane English and Senator Joyce Elliott. And I'm really as a tie there, the reason why I say that, you have Joyce Elliott who has really been fighting the good fight for her supporters on various issues and not, not afraid to share the reasons why yeah. and, and actually backed it up and then Senator Jane English with what she's doing with workforce education. All right. Do you want to chime in on that? I, I mean, I think those two are great options right there. Uh, Jane English in, in particular is somebody who uh, is more inclined to not be in front of the camera but mm -hmm be in the back room talking and yeah. making uh she's turned me down for interviews too yeah she's, <laughs> it, but i mean but she's that's, done a few she, that's not you know that's not a criticism of her at all that's the way she operates and i mean obviously it's effective all right i get the last question here we got a lot of task forces yeah. coming up uh <laughs> that have been created and will be created in this session we got the medicaid private option task force we have effectively a common core task force uh, the Higher Education Task Force, Jeremy Gillum's bill that's moving its way through. We're going to have a task force out of prison reform. Which one of those task forces has the most difficult task in front of it? Prison reform. Prison reform. Okay. The reason why I say that is just it's just a very uh, complicated issue. And I think uh, it's great that you have a governor that's uh, in tune with the issue and wants to put his best foot forward with it. But I think there's a lot of different dynamics there. So it's going to be really interesting to watch. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with prison reform just because it's so multifaceted. I feel like if you do a little bit here, a little bit there, that you're going to have enough 
options to get some wiggle room, whereas the private option, you're not going to have that. You're basically going to have to have one plan and that's going to have to work. At least with prison reforms, you can send some of them to Texas. You can do the regional facilities. You can, you know, there's, you can expand here. There's little kind of chinks in the armor that you can kind of tear that down with. And whereas Medicaid expansion, you're going to have to come up with one thing that you're going to have to get enough people behind yeah. to get through over and over and over again. And 75% too. Yeah. Steve? Private option, because it's just such a you know, explosive issue that, that people have boxed themselves in. Uh, I think on uh, these others that people, are, you know, there's, there's willingness to compromise on things, but people is, have campaigned promising to end this. And, you know, and plus just the, the sheer dollars involved. Not to mention the fact that we don't know if Obamacare is going to be blown up by the Supreme Court in yep. the next few months. So, I mean, health care has been the issue that has been unsolvable for so long, and it's going to be hard for this task force to solve it before the end of the year. I think that the winner of the task force here is the media because we're going to have so much to report oh on goodness. in the interim. <laughs> it's going to keep us busier than the session. It I mean, there will be more stuff at is. stake here. Tons so I, They're all important. I'm not trying to cop out on an answer here. I agree with all your arguments. But um, I, I think what you've made in terms of a point, Janelle, with the private option, it's got to have a thumbs up or a thumbs down vote. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more play, I think, in some of these other. I think Common Core will be a curious one, though, too, just yeah, what I they think the come up with. Yeah, kind of signaled by, uh, by his appointment of uh, Senator Key to that, you know, that this is going to be, I think people are going to start having to fall in line on that one, too, unless we think the governor's going to. Well, there's just a lot. I think there's a lot of activity out there in the general public on Common Core. Sure. There's some grassroots. Oh, yeah hard feelings on that. So I think that one makes it kind of tricky to land that plane mm -hmm. with a soft lane and maybe a bumpy ride for mm -hmm. them on that. All right, I'll tell Speaker Gillum that nobody uh, took higher ed as, a, as an option there. <laughs> 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 all right, Frank Scott, Steve Bronner, Janelle Lilly, thank you all for playing the game. Yeah, Appreciate you. Speaking of games, go watch our game tonight, six o'clock. Tonight, six o'clock. If you're just catching this, you'll be you have just enough time to get there. <laughs> That's all for our Talk Politics Roundtable this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out Talk Business and Politics this Sunday at 9 a.m. right here on KATV Channel 7. John Brummett sits down with Senator Jason Rapert for an interview you will not want to miss. We'll have some other coverage of what's going on in business and politics. Check out KATV.com and talkbusiness.net between now and then. Thanks. <laughs>